Well, what kind of knife should I carry on me? I'll answer your question. Answer your question. You should carry the knife that you have. <laughs> I'm not going to give you some nerd fucking stupid answer. Carry a knife. Doesn't really matter what kind. When it comes down to it, it's going to fucking stab somebody. It's going to cut somebody. Make sure it's sharp. <laughs> now, with that being said, I like to carry something with a plain edge. All that serrations and shit could get caught up on clothes, potentially even skin. So I say carry something with a smooth edge. I like to carry... Oh, well, that's not a great example. Make sure your safety's off. I like to carry an automatic knife. Um, I am able to in the state that I'm in, but in the states that I have lived in, automatic knives are illegal. So you got to be careful if you're going to carry it. Uh, assume that you're going to have to use it and then explain that shit in court later. And if you got an automatic knife, that's one more thing they can hammer you down for when you're on the on the stand there. So if you can, though, I would carry an automatic. Why? Because when it comes down to it, I've had some trouble in the past. You bring out your knife and you're fiddling with that little thumb thing on it, right? And it's like, ah. Uh, so if you can't carry an automatic knife, chances are you can carry a spring-loaded, spring-assisted knife. I like that because you carry it out, you flick it open, and it's done. You're ready to fight. Or chances are, more than likely, you're not going to get into a damn knife fight like this. It's more like you bring it out, you covertly open it, and you fucking go for it, right? Because knives are meant to be felt, never seen. Uh, that's the old cliche that I always learned. If you have a knife and you're bringing it out, don't let the other guy know you have it until it's already in him. Now, when I say to carry a automatic knife, it's easy and you're ready to go real quick. Uh, it doesn't really matter about fiddling with the damn thing or, you know, whatever. It's it's out and it's in the guy's face before he knows what's going on. A non-serrated blade would be better. Some guys like to carry the ones with half serrations and half a plain blade. Well, all right, it depends what you're using it for. If you're actually using it for utility work, maybe you want those serrations to like cut through ropes real fast or something. I used to work on ships. We all carried a knife that was either fully or half serrated, but we also used to carry it with the tip chopped off. We didn't, but sometimes we'd break the tip off, but generally we'd get them without a tip. So if it fell from a height, it's not going to freaking land down in somebody's, uh, somebody's head or even worse down in their clavicle or something. But those are considerations you want to take. What are you using it for? Are you using it for cutting ropes and utility shit? Well, then carry what you need to use it for. You can always, if worse come the worst, use it to do self-defense techniques as well. That's my two cents on a knife. Uh, it doesn't fucking matter what kind it is. If it's sharp and if it gets the job done, it's able to be used. Now, I've seen a bunch of different techniques on YouTube about, you know, do this, do that. And if he's getting your gun here, do this. Well, listen, when it comes down to it, know roughly where you're going to need to stab him. Okay. So in other words, learn some of the vital areas on the body and where the organs are. And then if you just fucking plunge the shit in, chances are he won't be able to stop it especially if you fucking hit him and then stab him. Um, just make sure that you really commit to those movements. Now, if you are going to be like fucking a ninja assassin running around out there, sure, learning different techniques would be cool. But when it comes down to it, they're not as necessary as knowing where those vital areas that you want to stab are, fully committing to it and really getting the job done. If you're half-hearted about it, you might get a half-hearted uh, execution of your technique to be nerdy about it, and then somebody might stop your elbow and you really might be in trouble. Uh, learning a thing or two about if somebody does reach out and stop your elbow like that, like we talk about on our Knife Fighting Secrets, available on gutterfightingsecrets.com, guys. If you go and check those videos out, yeah, you got to pay for them, but it's well worth the information because we tell you exactly how to get around all this stuff. If somebody stops your elbow, being able to you know, slice and dice in the right way is a good idea too. But like I said, on the fucking streets, generally, it's not that much. It's grab the back of his neck and fucking plunge it into him a bunch of times. And, you know, if he's just a freaking savage about it, and that's how it usually happens, that's what usually works from what I've seen. Hope that answered your questions. And if you have any more about knife offense, knife defense, or whatever the question is, we don't discriminate here. Plop it in the comments below. And we'll get to your question as soon as we can. Until next time, please remember that you were your first and last line of defense. And I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers, mother flowers.